Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today I've got a nice little electronics kit to put together. This one arrived just a little bit too late to be included in the last AliExpress Tech Time episode and this is rather unusual in that it's an electric screwdriver kit. Yes, I kid you not. So I reckon we should get this over on the bench and take a look at what we got. Okay, here we go then. So this actually arrived just after the last AliExpress Tech Time episode was filmed. So it never got included. But this should be an interesting little kit, I think. I hope. Ah, let's have a look. Not quite sure how this is going to work, but this is supposedly build your own electric screwdriver. Of course, why why would you buy one when you can build one? Now, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how comfortable this is going to be to use in practice, but look, good instructions. I like this. So we got a few chips and stuff to put on and a motor. And there is some sort of acrylic case. This is not going to be very practical to use. This is for fun more than anything, I think. I suppose you could use it. We'll try it. We're going to try it anyway. We've got a component list down here. We don't have a schematic, but that's just different language on the back there. All looks pretty straightforward. Okay, so what do we get? That's the, that's the case. Is it just two bits? Well, I suppose it's just the front and the back. Okay, all right. There's the PCB. Seems pretty simple. We've got one little surface mount chip there. We've got a USB cable, USB A to C. We've got a battery holder. Oh, okay, right. A lot going on here. What have we got? A little plastic clip of some sort. I'm sure it'll all become clear as we go. There's some standoffs and a brass collar type thing various screws, a surface mount chip that's just floating around loose, lovely. Oh, you get some screwdriver bits with it then, okay. So we've got a cross head and we've got a flat head, a little one there, that's all right. We've got two little bits of wire. There's our little motor with gearbox, some resistors. These are probably gonna be first in, so we'll keep those handy. Lots of little bits. Even aside from the electronic components, there's a lot of just bits. <laughs> I don't know how useful it's going to be, but it's going to be fun putting it together, right? So let's get the PCB holder. Now it's quite a relaxing thing just putting together a little electronics kit of an evening. We have actually got set step by step instructions and it tells me to solder the TP4056 chip on first at U1. That's the little tiny surface mount one. I need my tweezers for this. I've put a little tiny bit of flux there just to hold it. That's the end with the notch. That lines up with the end that's got the tiny little dot that you can just about see. Now, I don't have particularly steady hands, so I find surface mount soldering a bit of a challenge, but I will have a go. Definitely micro soldering is not my thing. I tend to favour large through hole components that I can actually see. I don't think that might do. I think we're there. Well, that's not too bad. Actually under the microscope that's not too bad. Possibly one of my better surface mount attempts then. Right, what's next? Gotta be happy with that. Looks like resistors next to go in, and we've got to put a 1K resistor at R1. Right, so we need a 1K, so as always, we can check. We've got the new improved LCR tweezers here. So 987 ohms, that'll do us. Again, I'm gonna cut the sticky ends off as I normally do, because otherwise it just leaves sticky residue on the ends of your leads, which can gum up your holes and you don't want that. Right, so this is R1. It's a nice easy board to work with because there's not a huge amount of components on this. I think it looks like there's a fair amount of engineering gonna happen here. We need a 2K resistor at R2. I think this is our 2K by the look of it. Yes, it certainly is. 
Two pieces of 10K resistor for R3 and R4. There's our 10K. So R3 and R4 are here. It's all right. All right, let's get these soldered in. Once we get all the resistors in, it always feels like we're well underway. Excellent. So solder the type C interface at the C1 position. That's there. I'm going to have to move this board around then, aren't I? Let's go into portrait mode. Really handy, these PCB holders. Between this and the Omnifixo, I've always got a way of holding stuff. I can use one of my Omnifixo clips, which are oh so handy, because it means I can just flip that over. There we go. Okay. There we go, one USB-C interface. Fantastic, now we've got what they describe as a monolithic capacitor marked as 104. That's 100 nanofarads and that's actually quite a good one. We had some 100 nanofarads on a kit a while back and they were well under. So this is actually a good one. This goes in C2, which is here. Fantastic. What else can we get in then? We can do the red LED, which goes in LED 1. Now, in the case with this particular kit, the long leg is the positive one. That's not the case with all LEDs or all kits, so it's always worth checking. But from the instructions on this kit, it's telling me that it is the long leg is positive. Some LEDs are different to others. And it's also showing you the markings on the board there, that the positive end has got a square pad and the negative end has a round pad and also a white shading on the circle. It varies from one kit to another. They're not all the same. So it's always worth referring to your instructions to make sure that that is the case. So the red LED goes in LED one, which is there. And the green goes the same, so the longer leg will go through the square pad. The shorter leg has the white shading on the board. There we go. Let's solder those in. Then we can move on to some electrolytics. There's not a massive amount of soldering on this kit, but there is rather a lot of construction. It seems we've got some engineering to do. I'm not sure how well that will go. The hazards of making videos, quite often there is a, a camera mount just when you, where you least expect it that usually comes into contact with your head whilst you're trying to see what you're doing. That happens more often than you'd think. Right, electrolytics time then. So we've got three pieces of 47 microfarad. They're all 47s. Now it's telling us in this case that the square pad is the positive, which is the long leg in this case and the legs need to be bent because these are going to lay down so the long leg through the square pad lay it down i'm going to use the clip situation to keep those flat against the board because otherwise they're going to be all over the place so let me do this one first real quick that's that one let's get those legs out of the way all right we can get two, two for one here. There you go. Look at that. So you can never have too many pairs of hands when you're soldering. Okay. Now we've got an IC socket to go in. There's a little notch you see here that's got to line up with the little notch here. So that's got to sit in there. There we go, beautiful, right now. I'm just gonna tack a couple of pins because then I can take the clip off. We've got a few other kits in the pipeline. I haven't done the walkie talkies yet. So we've got our IC socket in there. Now it does tell you there to put the IC in next, but I would generally leave that until I've finished playing with heat on the board because I don't want to damage that. That chip's an RZ7886. Oh, that's the motor driver. Oh, that, get, that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to leave that to one side until we, once we've finished soldering, then I'll pop that in because I don't want to damage the chip with 
too much heat or anything. There's a toggle switch to go in. This goes in at SW1. SW, isn't that a postcode on the South Bank? I could be wrong. And these little clips are really earning their keep on this kit, aren't they? <laughs> There we go, on off switch, beautiful. Anything like that, you wanna make sure that's really well soldered in because you don't want that moving about. What's next? We have two pieces travel limit switch. That's these. Ah. Apart from the motor, these are the last bits to go in, I think. Now, travel limit switch, it says to ensure the orientation corresponds to the PCB silk screen marking. So our travel switches are going here. Two of these to go in. This one goes the other way. Again, to hold this in. Yes, I can. Fantastic. We can get these soldered in. So we're nearly there. Solder these in. And then I think it's just the motor after that. Now we can remove the clips. All right, okay, well, we have our little switches in. It's coming together, still doesn't look quite like an electric screwdriver though. Now we've got to do the wiring for the motor. So let's have a look at our motor here. So solder the red tin plated wire to the positive terminal of the motor. Okay, that's all right. And then the same on that one. I think we're there with the motor. Now we've got to fix the motor onto the PCB. So I think we're pretty much done with the PCB holder now. Move that out of the way. So you can see which way the motor's gonna go in because you've got motor plus and motor minus so it's going to kind of sit roughly like this and we've got this little brackety thing here ah, which just sits on like that nice and easy and a little nut and bolt going through okay so it looks like we've got to put the nuts in this little recess here <laughs> all right we got it we got it that's that one things are looking up Right, that's got to go to here. So let's solder that one in. Here we go. And one here. Good. Motor plus, motor minus. Right, so now we're going to put the battery compartment on. And we're pretty much there, I think. Positive and negative ends of the battery compartment. That aligns with these here. So we've got plus here, we've got plus here. So that lines up with that. And we've got some nylon screws and nuts. And of course they're nylon, so I can't magnet them to my screwdriver like I normally would. This is where tweezers come in handy. There we go. Now we've got to solder that. There you go. Right, so I think we're good to install the motor driver chip now. Just taking note of which way the notch is. Looks like the legs are okay on this one. All right, I think we're good with the motor driver chip. Got to find an 18650 that works. Now we've got to fit the little brass collar on here. Now I've already put the little tiny grub screws in to save you the stress of watching me trying to put those in. They are really fiddly to do, by the way. Tweezers and patience is required for those. Now, you've got a smaller hole one end, which is the end that goes on the shaft there, and you've got a bigger hole there, which is what the screwdriver bits are gonna slot into. And you've got a flat edge on the shaft there. So what we wanna do is do up the grub screws until that bites on the shaft. It's a bit fiddly, because it's a really tiny Allen key. Let's have a go, because I feel like we need to put the battery in before we put the case together. Cause it's a tight fit for the battery. Right. Okay, 
seems to work. Okay, so the case, we've got just two acrylic pieces. At least I've only got two pieces to peel the paper off this time. Right, now then, which one goes where? Right, so this, I ah, see, so this is the top one. Okay, because you've got the cut out there for your little switches. So your short standoffs go through there and your long ones go on the bottom and they screw together. So repeat times four for the standoffs. So this one's going to go here. The battery that I've got in there is not charged in any serious way. So I'm hoping it's just going to be enough for a test. And you should be able to charge it up now via the USB-C Look at that. See, that looks, looks, <laughs> I don't know what that looks like, but it, it doesn't look like a screwdriver. It looks like a sort of mini cannon thing. Right, so not the most practical design because each time you want to change your screwdriver a bit, you've got to go through this Allen key procedure. There you go then, electric screwdriver kit. Well, yeah, it kind of, does what it should do. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not got a lot of torque, but yeah, it does. It will undo a screw and put a screw in. Not the most torquey, but then you're not gonna be building it for practical use, you're gonna be building it for fun, aren't you? And it's kind of a cool thing. You can recharge it via the USB port, and yeah, it's a build your own rechargeable battery screwdriver. What more could you want? Well, there you go, build your own electric screwdriver. Well, it's not overly practical, but it was a lot of fun putting the kit together. It's a nice straightforward kit to put together if you're a beginner or if you're just looking for a kit to do of an evening just to relax or to teach another family member about electronics and how the components work together. Yeah, it's a cool little fun project. Not overly practical, although I guess if you're into 3D printing and stuff, you could probably print yourself up a handle for it, I guess the possibilities are endless. That's a great thing with these little kits. You can modify it to suit your needs. We've built quite a few kits this year on the channel and some have been more useful than others, but they've all got one thing in common. They're all quite fun to put together. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video about the electric screwdriver kit you never knew you needed. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking, and subscribing. And big thanks to all my YouTube and Patreon members. Don't forget you can support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee which really does help to support the channel and keeps me making more videos. I'll be back soon with another tech related video but in the meantime take care and I'll see you on the next one.